Hi folks, this is an anagram on the first exercise uh, and, and sort of the general approach to doing exercises in this week's task one. Uh, you got quite a bit of, you have several small examples and the number of lines of code is tiny, but I don't want you to get uh, foundering at the beginning and not be able to just get this done. So I'm going to walk you through the very first exercise, the way that I would approach that problem. Um, there are no mysteries to calculating squares, so I'm not giving anything away by, by just walking you through this and showing you how I do it. So the directions here in the slides are important. Um, I do want a description from the slide as the first line as a comment. Um, we are basically using namespace standard and IO stream in every output. And um, I do want you to do a return zero. So um, I think what I would do is I've cleaned up the environment from my last demo a little bit here. I have a square.cpp that I just copied out of the uh, default code that Replit gives me. And I think the first thing that, that I would do is um, go ahead and uh, just get this part of each exercise done. So if we go to number two, we have a description, so you can retype that if you want. Not, not my favorite thing to do, if I can actually get this on my clipboard, uh, which for some reason I'm having trouble with this week. Okay, I'm gonna grab all of that. And um, so I don't know if my mouse is getting funky or what the deal is, but I'm having a lot of trouble uh, highlighting in a stable environment my um, text this week and sometimes it's me and sometimes it's the universe but at any rate okay that's the description line I want at the top of each file um, I'm supposed to have namespace standard yep namespace standard so we can have short lines of C out so um, using namespace standard right Hit, um, can't hit run because we have this problem where we have more than one executable. So I want to come over here and um, I think this is typed in from my last demo. So let me just go over here, get rid of the extra main.cpp and we are doing an output called square. Okay, so we're doing an executable called square and we're using square.cpp as its input to the compiler. And if we hit enter, okay, that runs and we have a compiler error, which is fine, you're gonna get those. Um, and I think I'm gonna add a uh, requirement to this week's homework that you have, to, um, you have to add to this folder um, a screenshot of the code and the best single um, error message you generated, the one that confused you the most, the one where you scored the most lines of output Put for the smallest thing wrong, um, whatever stands out to you from your experience. And um, so that means you probably should be taking screenshots of errors as you go along, because what you're going to want to do is be able to e either capture it on the fly or be able to go back and recreate it. And I got to say, being able to recreate an error on demand is a, a really, um, a really uh, enlightening exercise. Okay, so I'm gonna put the correct semicolon at the end there. Um, that means I don't have to use this namespace syntax at the front of C out. And now let's see if my code will compile and run. So all I have to do over here now is hit the up arrow key. It compiles and now I execute square. And I can see that this line is making it so I don't have to have that extra um, annotation candy on the C out. So now we go back here and, um, oh, this is important. I really want you to adopt the convention and use um, this line all the time that return zero. Um, main is a function of type integer which means that the universe is expecting it to return a number. So let's be polite to the universe and always 
return zero. There are reasons why you might return um, a different value. Uh, in, in the Linux world, it's really handy to be able to chain different uh, little tiny applications together. And if you are returning numbers other than zero when you have errors, it's possible for that command line chain to know when to stop and not um, go blundering on after an error has occurred. But I believe, look, thinking back on it, that in this course, we are always going to return zero, and I do want that code there. Okay, so this is the outline of every one of these. You're going to have a one or multi-line comment at the top that shows you um, that is the description of the task. These lines are pretty standard. You'll be adding uh, library includes for on some of these. Please do not have extra library includes. We don't want the universe included up here. If you need CMath, include it. If you don't need it, don't have it up here. Okay, and then we make sure that we add return zero to this environment. So um, now we go on to the individual task and let's grab that. Okay, so we've got the file name right. We've got the first line of code defined. And again, you can type this in if you want to. Uh, I've tried to make it. There we go. Sometimes going backwards really helps on that, by the way. I want these hard-coded values at the top of main. We don't have input in this environment yet. So we're just making const variables for to substitute for the user typing input. The convention, pretty much throughout programming, and certainly in this code, is to use an all uppercase name to, um, to indicate that this is a const value that won't change throughout the execution of the, um, of the program. Okay, and we're not given anything else, so we're doing integer arithmetic. So we want to declare an integer value, Oop, keyboard, let's call it square, let's keep things simple. Okay, and we don't have to do much here, um, int square, what's a square? It's the value times itself. So that's equal to value times value. Okay, and now when this code runs, we're going to, um, we're going we're gonna to have the value we need to output in the variable square. Um, but I've gone pretty far um, and done a bunch of work without, without, um, re, uh, without recompiling. So what I'm about to do is going to waste my time. So I'm going to grab this. Okay, and remember, we don't want to waste any more time. I don't actually have this one on a clipboard right now. Confessions of an instructor. So I'm going to try to copy that. Okay, so I can guarantee that what you will do next is hit run. Okay, big green run button up there, too tempting for the mind. You're thinking about your code, you hit run. And essentially you get this compiler error for the reason you know you get a compiler error is because you can't compile two mains at the same time. So if you have some version of your command line stored on a clipboard someplace or in a file where you can pull it out again, just paste it in. Otherwise, you have to do that fat finger potential, um, either grab that or um, and change it or type it in. So um, save your time where you can. Now we're going to compile square. Okay, and that seems to be working. Now, when we run it, uh, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have that in the buffer here. Okay. So basically, you lose the run buffer when you either reload the page or you hit the run buffer, you hit the run button at the top, and you have to start over. You can't up arrow if the run buffer isn't there. So I haven't changed the output at all yet, and unlike um, JavaScript and the JavaScript console that you might be used to, this command line has absolutely, absolutely no access to the values that are inside the program. So I can't, for example, if I type square, 
okay? All I get is that square is not a Linux command, okay? In, Lin in JavaScript, we were often able to take advantage of the fact that the console had access to values that were, were inside the running JavaScript or the executed JavaScript. In C++, that just doesn't make any sense at all. The, the object um, compiled program runs in its own memory space and our command line just is, is entirely isolated from that. So um, going back here, we want the output to be 25 squared is 625. So what we want here is, okay, what we don't want is you typing 25 squared is 625. Um, what we do want is we want to output the value, okay? We want to output the square. And I'd get used to doing an end line at the end of each of these lines. And, um, and this creates an output. It, it, this, these operators send these values to the output buffer um, standard out. And so this will output value, it'll output a string label, and then it'll output the result we just calculated. And now we should be able to see if our calculation is working. So I'm gonna avoid hitting the run button. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna up arrow twice to get three times to get my compilation back. Okay, that works. Up arrow twice to get the square command back. Oh, wait, hang on. That's what happens when you demonstrate errors, you get bollocked up. Okay, so now we're gonna execute square. Okay, and you can see that the calculation's fine, but my output is not well formatted. And that's because you need to explicitly put these spaces in there, okay? And I really do, I, I would like you to match my output, um, my example output as closely as you can. So um, go back and recompile. Go back and run, okay? And this, is, that's correct, that matches. Okay, now the only other thing you need to do is, um, is give me a screenshot. And so let's just talk about screenshots for a little bit. Um, think about this from my perspective. You're, you're writing seven pieces of code and, and it's worth your time to go out here to the command line and run each one of them because you're doing a few lines of code at a time and you have to keep testing and, and all of that. Okay, what I want to do is know your code worked. Okay, in the Replit environment, when you give me that read write link, I have no trouble seeing your code. Okay, so at no point, either when you're turning in your work or when you are asking for help, does a screenshot of your code do me any, any real good? If you want me to look at your code, let me into your REPL. Okay, when I'm asking for a screenshot, I'm asking you to save me the trouble of running your code. And trust me, it'll cost you points if you don't save me that trouble. So when you take a screenshot, I'm just gonna pull up my screenshot tool, which for once is not running. Hang on a sec, there we get started. Okay. Okay, so when you do a screenshot, okay, either just give me a screenshot of that okay, which will give me some insight into the struggle you had to get this to work and how the command line is working for you. Um, or, and then I will match that up with the code and that's really best. Um, I, you, I really don't think either one of us has anything to gain from you giving me a screenshot of the code and the output. Um, wait to do the screenshot until your code's absolutely right, okay? So we don't want a screenshot and then the code to have changed after that. But if you're doing the screenshot at the right time, after you have done the work, double checked the directions, made sure that everything's working right and that not only is your answer correct, but the formatting of your output is correct, I have a lot to gain by a screenshot that focuses on 
on the console command line, and then I will match it up with the code that ran. So um, I think that should help um, keep breathing through remainder. If you find remainder very difficult, go on to the float calculations. Um, they used to be the start of this exercise, and um, I added a couple int exercises just to uh, just to make it really clear what's happening with types. And I think the um, int exercise remainder is particularly useful um, for helping you get through the software maintenance task this week week without too much sweat. So, um, so remainder requires you to do multiple calculations. It's not as simple as square. Okay, don't use modulo. But um, if it if it gets confusing to you, go on to the two temperature conversions, do those, and then come back. And by then, you should have a rhythm down and be able to um, look at the code. I'm, I'm interested in knowing if remainder is particularly hard. Uh, it, it should not be, but this is the first time in C++ you'll have chained um, multiple calculations together. And I could see that being kind of an obstacle if you don't just maybe write the process down on paper first and keep breathing and just do it methodically, okay? And, um, and again, compile often, test often, have very small amounts of code to look at when you have a problem you don't understand. Hope that helps.